Dear followers, dear guests, dear participants, today, our guests today were together with His Excellency Jorge Alejandro Mastro Pietro, Ambassador of Argentina in Turkey. Dear Mr. Ambassador, good afternoon. Merhaba, sevgili dostum. <laughs> Merhabalar, sevgili dostum. Çok teşekkürler. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador. How are you? I would like to, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I would like to thank you on behalf of Ankara University for uh, accepting uh, and participating in our international webinar series. Well, uh, the pleasure is all mine. I have to thank you for inviting me. Uh, you, my dear friend, uh, Professor Nejati, and of course, Ankara University. The thing is that I would have uh, loved to do it sooner in your webinar series, but I had some small problems I had to solve, personal problems. And, uh, but I'm very happy to do it now. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. As I always say, Ankara University and the Research Center, the Center for Latin American Studies is your home. Whenever yeah. you like, You'll Thank come you. whenever you like. You'll I know. participate. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. If you allow me, then I will start with my first question, Mr. Ambassador. Shoot. The first thing I'd like to ask is about you and your mission in Turkey. Could you please be so kind to introduce yourself to our guests, to the participants, and say a few words about your feelings on your mission in Turkey? Okay. First of all, uh, let me say that uh, I've been here more or less a year and four months, a little less than a year and a half. I arrived in March 2019. Very happily, I did so because uh, Turkey and Argentina, the people, the Turkish people and the Argentinian people are very similar. So uh, when I arrived here, I must say I didn't have any problem. I didn't have to adapt. I completely felt at home. Uh, talking about me, well, you know, talking about me is difficult always to talk about yourself. But uh, I started my, my career about 40 years ago. Uh, I've been working besides, of course, at the headquarters in Buenos Aires. I've been working in Jamaica, in Mexico, in Portugal, in Venezuela, mm -hmm. and as ambassador in Greece. I was ambassador in Greece during more than eight years. And now in Turkey, as I told you, since uh, about a year and a half, a little less. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. I hope I can also stay like a year, like I did in, in Greece, and enjoy this beautiful country and the beautiful people, the beautiful Turkish people. An anecdote, just uh, to put a little bit of spice. When I started my career, third secretary in the ministry. I was working in a political department and I was the desk officer and I had to take care of the relations with Greece and with Turkey. Wow. Now, at the end of my career, I was so lucky to be ambassador in Greece and now I'm ambassador in Turkey. Wow. And uh, so uh, let me see, what else can I say? I can say that I've been working in the legal department in, in Buenos Aires through my career. Legal department, political department, Antarctica, um, human rights, uh, Latin America, um, cultural affairs, you see, I'm a generalist. 
as we used to say. I don't have a, a specific issue in which I'm expert. Many of my colleagues are experts in one thing or the other. I'm a generalist. I can talk about everything, not very deeply, but you know, I manage. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. In relation to my, to my mission here, uh, of course, you know, the mission of, of every ambassador is to strengthen the relations between both countries, your country and the country that receives you. So this is my mission here. I hope I can do a good job strengthening the political relations, the cultural relations, and of course, the commercial and economic relations. That this is good for both people because it will bring a lot of benefits. Most of all, in these times with this pandemic, that the economy all over the world is, is going to be hit very hardly. Anyway, if yes. you have any questions, specific questions? Of just course. Ask. Of course. I do have specific questions, but uh, just, just to start with, first of all, it's our honor to have such an experienced diplomat in our country. We're, we're talking about 40 years of diplomacy. I'm going to blush. I'm going to blush. <laughs> and... Uh, and it's interesting, it's the, the part you said about starting as a third secretary, attending Greece and Turkey, and then ending up as ambassador in Greece and Turkey is really interesting. This, uh, it's destiny, but uh, it's the in most interesting aspect of destiny, maybe, in the cycle of your life. So we can speak uh, of a cycle then, maybe, and uh, such a nice cycle. Yeah. I, I was very happy to hear that. I hope I it's not ending the cycle, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, my second question is about the tragic and most important, unfortunately, event of this year. Could you please give us some information on the difficulties of uh, COVID-19 pandemic in your country, uh, the actual situation and the measures uh, taken in your country? We know that your country is in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Therefore, uh, the, 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 uh, now you're starting out, you're starting out or you are in the middle of winter while we in the Northern Hemisphere are in summer. summer. So yeah. that could make some difference, I, I guess. Well, I, I really don't know. I'm not an expert, but I really don't know if climate has anything to do with the virus. Mm -hmm. Some people may say yes, some other scientific people may say no. It's, it's, it's something we are learning about. Exactly. Uh, in relation to Argentina, we had our first case the beginning of March. Some days after this, like um, maybe 10 days after this, we had our first death. And immediately the government with the main aim of saving lives of the Argentinian people imposed a very strict quarantine. Of course, nobody knew much about the virus, so they imposed a quarantine for two weeks to begin with. It was very, very strict, and only the essential services for the population were allowed to keep working. You couldn't move around a lot, just, you know, people were allowed to go to the supermarket or to the pharmacy, not more than that. And this went on after two weeks, 
they renew it another two weeks, then they renew it another three weeks. And everything was more or less contained. The cases, of course, were going up, but very, very slowly. So in, um, sorry, in um, May, because the situation seems more or less contained, the government decided to start opening, opening the activities, I mean. So uh, because of the majority of the cases were in Buenos Aires city and surroundings, suburbs of Buenos Aires, which is part of the province of Buenos Aires, you know, Buenos Aires city is the capital and it's surrounded by our biggest province, which is called also Buenos Aires. So the capital- The capital of the province is La Plata. Exactly, very good. You know a lot about us. You can, you can talk and I, I will listen to you. Come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry help to interrupt. Me, help me, help me, please, please. <laughs> You can wrap me whenever you want. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's all right. That's all right. Really, really, Nejati, please. So um, I was saying because of the majority of the cases were in Buenos Aires, the, the opening was made in two sectors. Buenos Aires had an opening which was slower and the rest of the country in which we had a very good situation at that time, even we had some provinces without any cases of virus, they had an opening, a quicker opening. And for example, to give some, some numbers, the manufacturing activity, I'm talking in the rest of the country, not Buenos Aires which is the majority of the country, of course. Uh, the, the manufacturing industry, which in April was working at a 54% uh, activity, even for example, to give you an example, you know that our automotive industry is, is one of the main ones. In April, they didn't produce even one car. In June, the manufacturing activity in the rest of the country was opening at an 80% rate. The steel industry in April was working at a 20% rate and in June at the 72% rate. Of course, the energy consumption went up and this was showing that the activity was really going on. And the shops, the shops during the quarantine, the strict quarantine were open at a 50% rate and in June at an 85% rate in some provinces, 95% almost all of them. Uh, what happened? We don't know if because of the winter, we don't know if because of the circulation of the people, the cases started going up slowly, slowly at the beginning and then at a faster pace. So what happened in, the, in, in, in mainly in Buenos Aires, as I told you, we have some, some, some areas really very much populated. So it's very difficult to control, you know, the contagions in, 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 these, in these areas. But anyway, uh, Beginning of, uh, beginning of uh, July, 
the government decided to go back to a very strict quarantine in Buenos Aires, not the rest of the, of the country. Only Buenos Aires and province of Buenos Aires, city and province, which is going to be on till Friday, till tomorrow. And tomorrow, because as for tomorrow, we can say that we had a quarantine of over a hundred days, hundred and maybe 120 days. So they need to start opening because not only the population needs, you know, to feel a little bit more um, free to do some things, of course, respecting all the sanitary measures, uh, social distancing that I like to call physical distancing and not social, because social we need to to keep, you know, the real, the social relations going. Actually, and, actually, you're right because it's not a social distancing; it's a physical distancing, yeah. like what we're doing now. We know each other. We talk to each other. We can see each okay, other. And we're doing this. <laughs> exactly. So it's not a social distancing. It's a no. physical distancing. You're right. So, uh, so they are going to start opening slowly, slowly the activities. Uh, right now, I can tell you, cases have gone up to 111,000. Mostly, most of the cases were produced in the last month, let's say. And death are accounting for 2,000. Of course, you know, every death is regrettable, but uh, we can say that uh, all these measures, quarantine measures the government adopted saved many, many lives because it's not a huge number that uh, of people that we have lost, even though, as I said, is very regrettable, even one. Naturally. So what happened with the economy during all this time? Of course, the state has to give assistance to individuals and to enterprise. So we have like, uh, we have a population of 45 million inhabitants in Argentina. From those 45 million, many receive income from the state. State servants or public servants, which amount for 3,200,000, pensioners, which amount for 7 million people. Then the uh, government established an emergency family income of about a little bit pay a little less than $200 a month for people who were in the very vulnerable sectors of the population. So the state helped around 8,400,000 people with this. They also established a program of emergency assistance for the production. So this, what was it? The state took upon itself the payment of a percentage of the salaries of the employees of the companies who were asking for this assistance. So the state helped to pay the salaries of 2,400,000 employees in more than 2,000, um, sorry, 200,000 companies. 
small companies, medium companies, most of them. And also they gave some credits to a very um, convenient rate for the enterprise who needed, you know, who wanted to take these credits to, to, to help themselves to keep on, to keep on going. Uh, and some credits to um, non-interest rate at all mm -hmm. for the self-employed people. I see. So uh, the state really helped, you know, many individuals and many companies to keep going on through the difficult economic times that the pandemic produced and is still producing. But we are, um, we have faith that slowly, slowly, not only Argentina, but the whole world is going to find the way to, you know, make the economy go up again. Naturally. I see that the measures taken by your government and our government are quite similar. Yeah. Because they, this direct aids to the families, uh, uh, low interest or no interest uh, credits yeah. for uh, the companies and the government assuming some part of the wages, I mean, of the salaries of the people that had to uh, not leave their jobs, but had to go on uh, obligatory uh, vacations. All of these measures uh, were, uh, I mean, paid, paid uh, yeah. vacations. They All of these measures are quite similar with, with the ones taken in Turkey. They also imposed a ban, a ban on firing people. Exactly. Without a cause, of course. But uh, this is, first it was for two months, then they renew it for another two months. And now they are thinking if they are going to renew it for a little bit more time till the economy really starts moving. Exactly. We had paid leaves to, like, uh, as I told you, and those paid leaves were uh, were made for about two months, and then they gave another uh, two months. So it looks quite similar, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But a specific question about the healthcare system, if you would allow me, Mr. Ambassador. Yeah, sure. uh, how did the healthcare system respond to this emergency in this uh, extraordinary period because uh, as you as we all know right now the pandemic affected directly the hospitals and the intensive care uh, departments of the hospitals so what did argentina do to well, solve this problem as i told you the government started very early with the measures to fight the pandemic and impose this very strict quarantine. So this gave us time exactly. to better all the sanitary system, the hospitals, you know, to try to uh, open new um, intensive care units open new, even, even what we call uh, modular hospitals, they were built, some of them, in order to, when the peak of the pandemic came, that some people, some, some uh, scientific persons, some, some scientific and academics are thinking that the, the, the peak it's coming at the end of July. So it will be coming very soon. Because, because all, all of these measures that we took, the pandemic they didn't grow very rapidly. 
it was, you know, maintained very low, very low, very low, very low for a long time. So now it's becoming up and we think we are going to, to pass through the peak maybe next week or the other. Of course, as I told you, this you never really know. Exactly. Uh, because this is a new thing we are fighting with. But with all these quarantines that, that uh, the government imposed, the sanitary system was um, able to, you know, to grow a little bit, to make it better, to have all the supplies that it needed. And uh, right now, uh, the rate of uh, occupancy of the intensive care units in the whole of Argentina is about 52%, 52, maybe 53. In Buenos Aires city and Buenos Aires province, it goes a little bit up because as I told you, there are most of the cases. So in this uh, sector of Argentina, the occupancy is around 60, 60 something percent, 62 maybe percent. But on the other hand, um, we have, as, as you know, a, a very well recognized all over the world scientific sector. So private companies, and the public sector starting working in different projects. So I'm going to um, enumerate some of them for to give an idea. For example, some entrepreneurs are testing a gel to protect the clothing against virus. The uh, two universities, the University of Buenos Aires and the University of San Martin are working also in some kind of um, clothes, fabrics with, with an antivirus and antibacterial uh, protection. They are working with nano components in the fabrics. Then we also started a project for a vaccine, a new vaccine. Uh, they are working in, a, in what we call a hyperimmune serum. What is this? I'm not an expert, but I will try to, to explain. This is done with the horses. The immune system of the horses, it seems that produce a lot of anti antibodies. So they introduce to the horse some parts of the virus, not the virus itself, not the virus dead, not some parts of the virus that won't affect the horse. And with this, the horse produces a lot of anti antibodies. They extract the antibodies and they make a serum that it can be applied I don't know if they are working with the worst cases, but with the, with the mild cases or the medium, uh, medium in, in terms of, uh, in terms of um, uh, illness. Uh, so you have mild, medium and worst cases. The mild and medium, it seems that the serum will work, you know, to, to help them to get 
over and not go to the worst of the virus situation. Um, then the vaccine that is uh, experimenting right now, the Pfizer and BioNTech laboratories, you know, they, they, they are testing them in Germany, in the United States, and they chose also Argentina to test it. They are in the finishing the second phase and they are going to start the third phase of the clinical testing on human beings. And they chose Argentina because uh, the scientific expertise they find we have, the operational capacities, and also because right now the virus is really working, you know, on the population. You know that Latin America these days, it seems is the worst continent, not only Latin America, the whole of the Americas, because United States has a really, you know, huge problem also. So um, some other vaccine is being tested in Brazil and it's going to be tested also in Chile. So um, then they, uh, they work and they design kind of a helmet to help with the ventilation system, with the oxygen the person needs when, uh, when you know, the, the, the virus starts affecting really badly to, to a person. Normally, when they have problems to breathe, they have to go into a ventilator, they have to intubate them. Well, with this helmet, they reduce the number of people that had, had to be intubated. You know, it's something they put, it's, it's like an astronaut had, you know, and, uh, and, and it gives uh, oxygen with pressure. So it helps the people breathe and they don't have to be using uh, ventilators or they don't have to be intubated. So this is good because it leaves ventilators for the people that really need you know, to be connected to, to this type of, uh, of uh, uh, system to help them breathe. Um, they also are working with the nasal spray to prevent, you know, this is, this is mostly for sanitary workers and they developed a local PCR test that they are putting into effect right now in Argentina for the last days. They started to produce a local test. Or we can say that, you know, like in Turkey, where you have also many programs and projects going on, Argentina is trying to help in every way uh, we can uh, to fight uh, against against the the pandemic. Very very interesting points that you have mentioned. The helmet was uh, the first time I heard about the helmet was at this let me, moment. Let me tell you, I think the helmet uh, was first developed in Italy. But the helmet in Italy was, uh, was able to be used just once and then they had to throw it away. In Argentina, they took the idea and they developed it. So the helmet now, it can be used not only for one patient, but you know, they can you wear the helmet then they clean it, they disinfect it and it can be used by other um, patients. 
Very, very interesting. Thank you very much for, the, for this interesting information, Mr. Ambassador. Um, let me ask you about specific sectors. Actually, you mentioned about the health sector. You mentioned some about the automotive uh, industry yeah. that stopped in April. Stopped in April. But, yes, but... Uh, and, and, and now he's working is, again. Now exactly, he's... exactly. You just told us that it is recovering now. Yeah. Uh, could you point out some other specific sectors, such as tourism, maybe agriculture, which is a very, very important sector in, in Argentina, and yeah. how they were affected during the pandemic, and how are they doing now? Well, you know, tourism was really affected. I mean, it's, it's like here, like in, in every country. Tourism stopped completely. Uh, right now, no foreigners can enter Argentina, only Argentinian people or some foreigners that are authorized for special reasons. Mm -hmm. And also the, um, the airports are closed. Uh, the, just in September, they are going to start opening the airports for the airlines start coming to Argentina. Right now, there are only specifics, specific flights authorized either of, well, for, for, for like three months, it was um, Argentinian Airlines that was going and coming, uh, repatriating Argentinians and taking some foreign foreign nationals um, abroad. In this regard, I must say, I must point out that beginning of uh, May, we had a very good cooperation with Turkey and Turkish Airlines because we had a flight from Istanbul to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and from there to Argentina that took, you know, Argentinians, Brazilians, and some other nationals from some other Latin American countries back to South America and brought back Turkish citizens that were, you know, in, in, in Brazil or, or Argentina. And the cooperation was, was very, very good in this sense. And also we, the government has uh, some agreements with some um, airlines, some other airlines, and they authorize some flights to go down mostly, as I told you, with Argentinian people who are still abroad. Most of the, of the people who were uh, tourists and they were, you know, caught abroad because of the pandemic, most of them are back. Now we have some people that uh, were working abroad and because of, of the situation, they don't have any, any job right now and they want to come back. Or they were working at different programs in different countries and the program, the programs stopped. Uh, so they want to go back. So we are having some flights uh, going down to, to Buenos Aires but they are very few. They are going to open the airports for foreign flights in September, up to now. Maybe they, you know, can change the date, but up to now is September is the, the, um, the month. Uh, agriculture, agriculture, you know, they, kept working because as, as I told you, 
the really big problem was in, in Buenos Aires and the suburbs of Buenos Aires, which are part of the province of Buenos Aires. And the agriculture uh, sector works all over the country. Outside. All over the country. So we kept, we kept uh, the agriculture sector kept, kept working. And uh, even though like in every country, the balance of trade, you know, they went down everywhere. The exports and imports, you know, were still going on because the cargo planes, you know, they were working every everywhere, mostly everywhere in the world. They had cargo flights still working. Yes, and the vessels are also also working. The transporting vessels, the transporting lines, the ships are uh, also working. We had also help from 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 different countries. We receive a donation of uh, sanitary supplies of uh, funds to, to dedicate to the sanitary system. Um, also help with um, for, uh, for, for special courses to prepare people to fight the pandemic. Um, so <clears throat> the help and donations from other countries uh, came in, in different ways, and not only from the public sector, but also from the private sector. And we received a lot of help from China, from the States, from Germany, from uh, Italy, from the European Union, from Japan, from South Korea, from the Korean Republic. And, uh, but, huge donations were made by the Chinese uh, government. We sent like, uh, I don't know, maybe more than 20 flights uh, from Aerolíneas Argentinas went to China and came back, you know, with, with uh, help to fight the pandemic. I see, with medical supplies from China. Very interesting. Thank we you very bought, much. We bought Sorry. some supplies from China, mm -hmm. but we also receive donations. I see, I see. Very interesting information. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, my last question uh, for today will be, what possibilities of cooperation do you see between our two countries during the present pandemic and afterwards? And naturally, I would like to ask about the flights too, but you actually mentioned that your airports are closed until Yes, yeah, September. Yes. Yeah. So I assume that if the flights of uh, Turkish Airlines start, they're going to start after September, most probably, right? September the 1st, it's supposed, we are supposed to open uh, for the foreign flights. I see. Well, inshallah. And what uh, other possibilities of collaboration do you see between our countries now and afterwards? We, we have a very good cooperation between IMVAP, IMVAP Argentina. IMVAP, it's a very well-known public-private company in Argentina, very well-known all over the world. They are very recognized. They work in... Um, in the um, nuclear sector for peaceful purposes, uh, nuclear medicine, uh, satellites, uh, you know, advanced technology. And they are very, they, they have done projects in, in different countries around the world. And uh, they have, in back Argentina and tie the Turkish aerospace industries 
have a joint venture that was established last year, I think it was in April or May, to produce small communication satellites. So uh, these two industries, let's say, or companies cooperate very closely in this, in this sense. Also, I had, um, maybe two weeks ago, I had a video conference with the Argentinian chapter of the IC. And uh, we were talking of cooperation in different fields. For example, they are very interested in cooperate in the creative industries sector. You know that you produce wonderful soap operas. Yes. And uh, that they are very popular all over Latin America and all over the world. Yes. I, I remember uh, one of them, very, very popular was, it was called Thousand and One Nights. Exactly. And uh, at the time that they were showing this soap opera on the TV, everything stopped. Everybody will run to see it. I mean, it was, it was, it was something. And even today, you are still exporting um, many, many of soap operas. You also have a, a very good um, film industry. So, because we have also a very developed uh, film industry and audiovisual industry, uh, I was talking to, to one of the businessmen of this uh, Argentinian chapter, uh, chamber of the IC, and he was very interested to, to cooperate with, uh, with our companies. Uh, even he told me that he was in conversations with uh, some of them right now. Also, another um, another businessman uh, told me that he was interested in um, enter in contact with Imbap because he knew that it was a very well recognized company in the nuclear medicine sector. And um, of course, the agricultural industries, uh, a sector that you have developed and we have developed. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of possibilities, you know, to exchange experiences, to do things together, to cooperate. And this was another sector in which they told me they were interested in, in, um, in doing something. And of course, investments, investments, we are open to the wonderful Turkish companies that will want to invest in Argentina, in agriculture, in the gas sector, in the hydrocarbon sector, that it's, uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, in, in this sector in Argentina. And also to establish new industries. Uh, really, really happy to receive, to receive. I see, I see. And uh, I'm sure there are going to be lots of opportunities uh, that the Turkish party, the Turkish companies will see and develop in, in your big and very big and very rich country. Yeah. So I think... 
you enter Argentina and then you have the possibility to enter Mercosur countries and also the rest of Latin America. Yes, exactly. I agree. I totally agree, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for sharing this hour with us. It was a great honor for us to have you uh, with us participating in our international webinar program. Uh, as I told you, this is your house. Whenever you want, come I back. I know, I know. <laughs> and, uh, it was an honor sharing this uh, session of our webinar uh, series with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, once more. As I told you, was completely mine. And most of all, to have the chance to talk to you and to change, exchange, exchange some ideas. Because as I said, you are a really good connoisseur of the Latin American reality. So you have, you have written some books about it and, uh, and, and, and also given conferences. And uh, so uh, the honor was mine sharing with you this time. Thank you to you and to Ankara University for the opportunity. And of course, I'm available whenever you need me, I am there. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank See you, you soon then. Good afternoon. Sevgilidos Tom. Görüşmek üzere, Sayın Büyükelçi.